Stratford University, changing lives one student at a time. With service comes sacrifice. With sacrifice, separation. And on the home front, longing for loved ones in harm's way. Anticipation for the day they come home. This is that day. This is homecoming. You know, a former CNO, Admiral Anderson, once said that the Navy has both a tradition and a future. And we look with pride and confidence in both directions. And today, that is certainly true. I would like to welcome all of our friends from the state of Washington. Welcome to our great Commonwealth. You are here at Naval Station Norfolk, the greatest and largest naval base in the world. It seems like yesterday that we just commissioned the Ford behind me, the aircraft carrier, and here we are today for another important addition to the United States Navy. I'm honored to be here today representing the 20,000 women and men of Newport News Shipbuilding. Today's ceremony is a time to celebrate our nation's newest Virginia-class submarine. It's also a time to acknowledge the skill, commitment, and dedicated service that led to this extraordinary achievement. This submarine, like her sister ships of the class, represent the very best of American manufacturing, innovation, and pride. Oh, this can't get them a, a bigger honor. I mean, I'm, I'm here representing all the Duper News, the, the greatest shipbuilders in the world. I mean, I'm, I'm here to, to represent them. It's, I mean, it can't be a higher honor. Coming on a ship now that is, is complete and operational, it makes us feel so proud. I mean, it's a beautiful ship. You know, when we were building it, it, it didn't look this, this beautiful. I mean, it was, it was grinding dust and welding smoke and paint films, and now you, you, see, you smell food being cooked in the galley, and I'm here looking at it. I'm seeing everything complete, I and mean, it's, it's a beautiful ship. So she's slightly uh, longer than a Los Angeles class. She's approximately 30 feet uh, longer. Um, she was built to operate in the littorals. And uh, what you'll notice is that we have what are called uh, Virginia payload tubes. Uh, so those are two canisters that each hold six Tomahawk uh, cruise missiles. Uh, so those are placed our vertical launch tubes. So that's, that's unique to Block 3 Virginia class, which we, of course, are. That's one of the uh, bigger improvements that have been made. Uh, you know, we obviously have the upgraded uh, sonar and fire control systems as well. We operate continuously surrounded by an enemy, right? and that enemy is the ocean itself. It's always trying to get in, it's always looking for a crack, it's always looking for a weakness. So when I take these guys to sea, they have to be impervious to that. They have to be ready to withstand the pressures of being deep. It's very, very unique to, to kind of live in a, in a space where, you know, for sometimes up to months at a time, you, you, you can't, you don't have the option to just go outside. Um, you know, that can get a little bit challenging just because sometimes it feels like there's no escape. Um, you know, that's not a bad thing, but it, it's really a, you've really kind of got to put any personal differences aside. You've really got to come together as a team because, you know, if you don't like the person you're working next to, guess what, you're not, you're not getting away from them. And uh, sometimes that can be a little challenging. It's unique, but I, I think it's pretty cool. It's interesting. The crew is the most important uh, component of the ship. Huntington Ingalls um, and the team at uh, Soup Ship did a great job uh, delivering us a capable platform, but it's actually the crew that fights the ship. Without the crew, I mean, you don't have a warship. The nickname for the USS Washington is the Blackfish. That's the name that the uh, Native Americans in Washington give to the orca whale. We've taken that nickname, the Blackfish, and, and we've kind of kind of rolled with it. Um, you know, it's really cool to be a, a member of the Blackfish. It's, it's you know something that we uh, go out there and put out. Fear the Blackfish makes it you know feel like we're we're ready to accomplish the nation's bidding. Let me speak now to the crew. 
and say to you that I know that in the missions ahead, as you set out to sea, there will be many difficult days and nights, many difficult weeks, months, and years. I want to thank you for your service to our country, and I want you to know that though sometimes being in a submarine, it may feel like you are undetected, but just because you're undetected, just know that you are remembered. On behalf of the great state of Washington, I congratulate you. I wish you safety always, and God bless. As USS Washington joins the fleet today, she will forever carry with her the pride and craftsmanship of her builders, the spirit of her sponsor, and the strength of her crew. To the crew of Washington, this is your charge. Take our newest crown jewel and bring her to life. Make this boat the best submarine in the world. Live to the standards of your namesake and take pride in our past but give us confidence in our future. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy and for the President of the United States, I hereby place United States ship Washington in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. Thank you, sir. Homecoming after the break. Cyber attacks are occurring everywhere. Silent and undetected, malicious code and bad actors invade systems and expose information and assets within. That's why Stratford University is building the next generation of cyber warriors. Security, technology, defensive and offensive cyber education. Powered by Stratford University. Stratford University, changing lives one student at a time. Ladies and gentlemen, Gold Star families, coal heroes, shipmates and friends. Thank you for joining us today at this hollowed place to remember our fallen shipmates from that fateful day 17 years ago and halfway around the world. Where today is an opportunity to come together as one Navy family, one coal family, to honor our shipmates and the important legacy of the crew that, that day. Our coal shipmates that kept coal that kept our great ship afloat for 96 hours through damage control efforts. I want to personally thank and recognize the Gold Star families here today. No words can express how much we care. No words can help ease your sorrow. But I hope this remembrance brings you comfort and shows you that your loved ones will never be forgotten. I was just blessed not to be in the locations that I normally would be. Um, I, I guess that's a blessing, but also it's, it's, it's a heartache because we lost a lot of, a lot of great people that day. And there was a lot of kids that had great things that uh, they were going to do. And they were cut short that day. Um, so we lost those. And, and, and at the same time, we gained heroes that, that actually they went above 
what you would ever think they would do. The people that you thought would do well, eh, they didn't do so great. But these these kids that you said, wow, you know, they're so young, they jumped in and they did extraordinary things, and it just makes you you proud to serve with them also. I'm Kevin Rux's mother. Uh, he was one of the 17 that lost his life. Being with old other coal families and know that our families, our sons are being recognized and our daughters, it's a measure of healing for me each time I come down here. We're a Navy family. My husband retired Navy and Kevin followed after his dad's footsteps. Kevin was in the Navy for 10 years. Um, he took pride in his job. He took pride in knowing that he was the force that was protecting the United States. And that made us proud. That made us happy to know that he, he did like his job. He did like what he was doing. It's important because of uh, you know the shipmates we lost. They gave the uh, ultimate sacrifice, um, and just uh, remembering them is something that uh, we've got to do. And, and as well as uh, you know, trying to talk to some of the new shipmates, and uh, so they can learn from that, and just keeping the country aware of uh, you know what freedom is really about. This ship will always be linked to the American resolve. This crew stands on the shoulders of their family, or their fallen shipmates, and we will never forget them and their families' tremendous sacrifices. Our Navy will continue to stand the watch. Thank you, and God bless. Stay tuned for more Homecoming after these messages. Cyber attacks are occurring everywhere. Silent and undetected, malicious code and bad actors invade systems and expose information and assets within. That's why Stratford University is building the next generation of cyber warriors. Security, technology, defensive and offensive cyber education. Powered by Stratford University. Hi, I'm Melinda, here to thank Stratford University for my $5,000 Golden Opportunity Grant. Well, my name is Albert Lambright and we are here to celebrate the fact that my beautiful lady is about to get a check to improve her education. Yes, I came in one day and I spoke to George and he went over all the um, opportunities that they had to offer. He walked me around the school and showed me around and showed me where I would be. And then we came back downstairs and we talked more about the classes and he was very helpful not to start me where I would be too overwhelmed so I wouldn't be nervous and run away. You know, it was such a hard effort trying to get her to go, but once when she seen me walk, she was so happy, and that just made me happier. Yeah, him walking made me want to go and pursue my career. Well, it's been something I've been aspiring to do for a long time. I, I was in college when I was in the Navy, and it was harder. And once when I came out, the benefits of education is <laughs> you have to have it to get far, even if you do have military experience. And Stratford just gave me the opportunity to get to where I needed to be. Two years with Stratford was was definitely worth my while. I just got my degree in business administration and I'm staying in for my MBA. I graduate in June of next year. Well basically, 
The one thing that I have sold her on, which I am so glad, that's what makes me proud, is the fact that one day we don't want to work. And through this education, this will get her financially stable to the point where she won't have to work again. It's going to be a hard road, but I'm going to support her each way through. Well, you know what? The one thing the Navy taught me how to do, how to take care of family. And being that I don't have to deploy, I'm all right. I can do that for the family while she does her homework. My kids thought it was amazing. Yeah. They saw me as, you know, just trying to take care of them and didn't think I was going to do anything else. But when I told them that I was going to go back to school, they were very proud. I have always told them to be better than I am. My, my um, thought process was to just raise them and get them to where they need to be. And then I can focus on myself. So that's what I did. I, they graduated from high school. Now they're in college doing their thing, learning, so it's my turn. What would you tell somebody that's on the verge of furthering their education but isn't sure yet? I would say take a leap of faith and just do it. Further your career, it's a great opportunity, and it's all about you. There's always an excuse not to do something, but to better yourself, there's nothing better than walking, graduating, and opening the doors of opportunity. So I would say, get up and just go do it. Don't make any excuses, just do it. You know, that. funny enough, after I graduated, that was the one thing that I ran out the building saying, they can never take this from me, this one's mine. So, yeah. You're gonna get there too. Yes, I am, one day at a time, but I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna make sure of it. <laughs> <laughs>We have uh, about 350 sailors that are deploying with us uh, and then we're going to head down to uh, Mayport, Florida where we'll pick up our uh, Hilo and a uh, detachment of sailors down there as well and then we'll uh, head over on deployment. everyone. Everyone was a little unprepared for everything, but we're getting through it. We're dealing with it best we can. This is my first um, beginning of a deployment. We started dating halfway through his last appointment. So I got to be there for homecoming for that and then my first time actually saying see you later. So. sending my husband off on his six month deployment. I just want to say bye and send as much love as possible. I've known him all through high school, six going on seven years, and we always like gave each other a little love, you know, like stay strong, you know, like it's only six months, it could be way worse. You could be going to way more dangerous areas, but he's gonna come home. He's gonna come home safe in town. Totally believe it.
whether they're a sailor like myself, been married for a long time with kids and grandkids. Uh, we all go through different cycles, but it's that separation, uh, but we're really drawn together by the mission that we go to do. We're focused on that. Uh, of course, we'll miss uh, our families over the holidays, uh, but we'll have each other and we'll get through this. The hardest part of uh, standing here would be saying goodbye and those last hugs. And yeah. Those sort of things. Watching the ship leave is uh, a really hard part about the deployment. There's always sailors that deployed for the first time. We probably have uh, some sailors that have just reported in the last few weeks. Got here, we're told to get all your stuff on board. Uh, and that really for them becomes the greatest learning opportunity. They get to see the ship at sea for a long period of time and really get good uh, in, their, in their job and, and really master their skills. Our son is uh, deploying on the Monterey and he is our oldest son, our oldest child and we just um, wanted to be here to support him. He's a single sailor so um, felt it was important to be here to send him off properly. So he came out of um, his school in Pensacola and met the Monterey on, their, on this past deployment they were on so he was out there I guess maybe three months so and then he's getting the full Full, full deal this time around. I have never felt so far out on a limb before in my life. I have publicly just put it all out there and I'm going to do this thing, but I wasn't positive I could do it. I'm Gary West, I'm a retired Air Force Colonel and I biked 2,500 miles for families of fallen veterans. It was never hard to get up out of bed in the morning to go in and fly a fighter and to have the privilege of serving our country in combat twice in the F-15 and once in the F-16. The greatest thing about my whole career was that time in the cockpit, taking off and doing the mission. Service is a trait that should not be just restricted to something you do. I think, it, I think of service as who you are. So I thought, what, what can I do? What can I do? How can I leverage my experience, my uh, military background to give me a voice or to access, to, to step into somebody's life and help them? And that's what I wanted to do with this ride. There were two purposes of the Patriot ride. One was to, to honor some specific families who have uh, experienced the loss of a loved one. And the other one was to raise money for Folds of Honor, a charity that, that takes care of these types of families. And my goal was to engage people along the way and give them a chance to actually say thank you by folding flags and experiencing a flag folding ceremony all up and down from, from Maine to Key West. Something about folding the flag, you know, what I discovered was by having people actually experience folding the flag and having a real name associated with that flag and a real family, you'd see people while they were folding just tearing up. And, and to have that cause sort of a swell of patriotism happen every day was truly remarkable. When this idea came to me, I didn't even have a bike. There was a bit of, you know, nervousness in my mind that, you know, could I f have an epic failure along the way or just give up or what? But this has not been about me. There's not a higher calling to, to serve others, I think. It was, it was a, a dream and a passion to do something to bless other people. And it's kind of rewarding, I think, to, at the end of the day to feel like, you know, I made it better today.
cyber attacks are occurring everywhere. Silent and undetected, malicious code and bad actors invade systems and expose information and assets within. That's why Stratford University is building the next generation of cyber warriors. Security, technology, defensive and offensive cyber education. Powered by Stratford University.